Well, my friends, welcome to the metal shop. I have decided to completely tear apart the, I'm calling it the Chineseum Jackson Firebird. I've decided that there's really no point in, you know, pussyfooting around. This thing just needs to be stripped to a husk and I will go from there. But I thought I would take a few minutes and go over everything that's wrong with the Chineseum Jackson Firebird. All right, so let's start with the headstock. This is nowhere even remotely close to a Jackson shape. Uh, I don't even know what you call that. A scythe, a machete, it's machete. It's ridiculously, ridiculously bad. Um, now I'm gonna point out the hardware, but the hardware is what it is, okay? Um, it's a budget guitar. So, of course, they're going to cut costs with the hardware, but I'm just going to point it out to you. All right? So, bear that in mind. We have strong incorrectly, all upside down. Not a big thing. A lot of the issues with this guitar, I will point out, are workmanship issues that could very easily be corrected and doesn't make the guitar any more expensive whatsoever. Okay, the locking clamp. We went over this when I got it. This clamp here was too big by 3 30 seconds to a 16th of an inch. It was like, uh, it just didn't even fit in this in this slot here. And a standard Floyd Rose clamping block will not fit in here because of this, it, the nut and this little adjustment makes it a little bit smaller. I don't know how else to describe it, but it looks like a regular nut will fit on there quite easily okay uh press cover three three screws or that's whatever let's see here we've got uh, no name tuners here on the back qc passed that's hilarious um they're the they're goto sg36 size or is it shallower this calls them the sg36 i'm not sure they're fine if this thing had a hard tail or a tunematic or something like that, these would go in the bin. They're not, they're a little bit, a little bit notchy and the ratio is not that great. And they're just, they're knockoffs. They're just crappy tuners. But, um, and it's funny because I got this from Ed Roman's website. Anything on the other side of a locking clamp is only making really gross tuning adjustments. And as long as they do that and hold relatively well and you lock the clamp, it's fine. Anything is fine. Um, this uh, fret marker here, if you can see how light this one is compared to the others, it's just weird. I don't know why it's like that. There's like, I'm sure something with a clear, something happened to that one. I don't know. Um, again, I mentioned this, there's a, there's a, nasty blem right here if you can see that it's been touched up kind of poorly um it's under the clear you can't feel it uh the the binding here is discolored if you can see that and the joint the binding do you notice how it gets narrower as we go up the neck here it's like full kind of full width binding down here and then it shrinks right up to nothing, which leads me to another possible issue. Um, I'm not sure if the guitar will ever play and be set up, be able to be set up well. Right now the action's a little bit high. It's too high in through here. And the Floyd Rose is decked. So I'm not sure if that's something that will be able to get this any lower, that the spring, um, the shim there that, that gives the spring plate support, the spring plate support shim, for lack of a better term, I know it's not a shim, sits down in the cavity, so it is truly sitting flush. So I'm not sure that the tremolo can sink down any, any further. It may be a situation where we need to do like an Eddie Van Halen, um, where you're, you're cutting you know, a quarter of an inch or something like that, just so you can recess the trim just that little bit, but you still have that flush mount. Um, the neck is very thick. I mean, it's thick like, you know, like a 58 Les Paul, 
you know, it's thick, which I don't mind. That's fine. The, the fingerboard, I think it, they're calling it Laurel, Indian Laurel. I have a, a SLX Solus that has this. Um, I think the problem is it's not the fingerboard, it's the, the frets. They're super dirty. And they, if you, so, you know, it feels really just crunchy and notchy when you bend the strings like that. So, okay, that's a workmanship thing. A brief polish of the frets. And again, I know that's time and, you know, and cost in a factory, so on. Um, but that could be taken care of quite easily with a huge, they could do it with a huge buffing wheel like they used to buff paint, just buzz right down through all those frets. Um, I haven't even plugged it in to see that it works, and I'm not even going to. I'm not even going to bother. I know this pickup is garbage. Um, it's going to get chucked right into the trash. The trem is is garbage. It's a paperweight. The fine tuners are tough to see here, but look how far they stick up off the body. That's ridiculous. And do you see, look at here, look at the airspace underneath the saddles. I've never seen any Floyd Rose or any knockoff that has that amount of airspace. I mean, holy crap, that's hopefully that that huge gap there is the difference in action that I need. Um, I'm actually, these look like the posts and looking at it like this, the posts look like they could go down a little bit and it's not, the trim is not quite level. So we can get, we might be able to get just um, the amount that we need. Um, I'm sure these posts are made of soft metal. I'm going to replace those with proper hardened Floyd Rose posts. Hopefully the, um, the threading is the same. If it's not, I can pull these and um, insert new posts. The strap buttons, they're not Jackson style. They're decent strap buttons. Um, it looks like they use a rubber washer there. Um, not, a, not a felt washer, but they're all right. I mean, regular Jackson would look good on there. Again, I showed you this plastic insert i mean we do everything we possibly can to save money but there's plastic inside the knob and this is a very cheaply knurled you can't even feel it um knob uh plastic jack plate uh eight very cheap asian input jack let's check that real quick because those things always stink Oh, yeah. Yeah, look at this. There we go. Oh, my goodness. Oh, holy cow. That is not, that's not what you want. That's not what you want. Oh. Have to use all your might to push the jack in and pull it out. So that's not good. All right. Back here, I've touched up all these holes. I couldn't even help myself. I realized I had some cream, some very old guitar re-wrench, vanilla gorilla spray paint. I sprayed it in a little cup here and used a, just a little pointer and kind of dabbed it on. I filled the holes with um, some wood shards and wood glue because I'm going to have metal plates made and I'm going to use a standard all parts number two screw. It just looks so much better. And I know you'll never see it and it really shouldn't matter, but it's just the way I am. I can't even help it. I I pay attention to details like that. So there's gonna have proper metal back plates with no hole um, and the very small number two. Um, they're pickup mounting screws is what they're advertised as, but guitar manufacturers use them for practically everything. Now, this is the toughest thing to see here but, and I've showed this before, hang on, let's, uh, let's go move off of Skycam. But there, get some light on the subject. That is, get my shadow out of here. That is the post. I did a little PS in my last video. But that's the Floyd Rose post focus poking through the route. Again, workmanship. There's that shouldn't be like that. I mean, even on a cheap guitar, 
look at all the room that we have here where you could have left the wood in there, focus, could have left the wood in there and really had the strength that you need to support the, the posts. Uh, I mean, just workmanship. Again, um, when they buffed, when they went sanded and buffed the guitar, they did a nice job. The guitar looks good, but you can tell they stopped kind of right in this area, counting on that plate, covering it up. And the finish is nowhere near as good here underneath that plate. I mean, it's really, it's really kind of a shame where that's an extra minute or two of buffing to just get that right and waiting, you know, uh, a day or two for the paint to cure and pre-drilling your holes. Again, just that's just a little bit of work. I mean, all the things I've detailed, you know, we haven't added 15 or 20 minutes to the building process of this guitar so that you're not getting all the horrible chip out. It just looks terrible. It's very small pot in there, which is crazy. Looks like we have enough room for a big one, but look at the distance here. That's gonna be some neat trick, getting the wires from your input jack here all the way to there. Cause I plan on, I'm gonna replace everything. I'll put in a proper Switchcraft input jack. I'll put in a proper, proper pot. I'll use this gavet uh, pushback cloth wiring where it will fit. Looks like they drilled a very, very small hole for the, um, the ground here to the claw. That will probably have to be opened up. I don't think that gavet pushback cloth wiring will even fit through there. Um, anything else that I can think of that is wrong with, let's flip this over. I think that paint is dry. That is wrong with the Chinesium Jackson Firebird. I'm gonna see if this will take, you know, some regular um, lemon oil and dress this up a little bit here. But anyway, let's go to a time lapse and let's just blow this thing apart. All right, my friends, cool. All right, so got her completely stripped down. And honestly, looking like this, it's it's kind of weird. It seems like we've got more value in this husk than we do with all the junk parts. The junk parts, they detract. They just take away from it. Would you pay $200 for this? I think you would. Even if this was, say, an entry-level Fernandez or Tokai or something like that from the 80s, Someone was selling this husk on Reverb and they wanted 300 bucks for it plus shipping or whatever. You'd snap it up and be like, oh, I can build a great guitar out of that. And I kind of think that's where we are here. Um, only real problems I had was getting the springs out of the block. Uh, okay, this thing and the weight of this is it's flyweight. It weighs nothing. I mean, this is just junk. Um, you saw me pull the posts out. They came out nice and cleanly. Um, these are original German Floyd Rose posts that I pulled out of the parts drawer, and they'll slip in there perfectly. Um, these are uh, Floyd Rose 1000 series posts, and I, I think they have a little bit more of the their fine thread, just like the real German Floyd, Ro Floyd Rose are, but the knurling, the fluting, on the insert is a little more aggressive. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a combination. I will use the 1000 inserts, but use the, the hardened German steel um, Floyd Rose um, posts. Why not give myself every advantage? I did, the one thing I did leave in there, if you saw, was I left that wire. Um, and this is drilled in this is drilled in pretty deep, like somewhere into here. 
and obviously there's a hole from here to there. Um, I can use this wire to pull the new wires or it's just wire. That's a nice shielded two wire um, system there. So, you know, is what it is. I think we'll be able to get that filled. No problem. I'm gonna. Ju I'm just gonna wood glue a, a piece. I'll custom. I'll build a piece to fit. We got this edge here on the bottom and this edge here on the side, and I'll wood glue a nice piece in there, and that'll add all the strength it needs. It's really. I mean, I don't know if you saw. I don't know what I did with it. Um, the piece of wood that came out. It's like it's not paper thin, but it's Manila. It's Manila folder thin. So that's all the difference on both sides of the post is really that, you know, a couple of business cards of width. Um, regular clamp. Looks like it'll fit on there. It is an R3, which is nice. I mentioned the fatness of this neck. I will get, I'm going to do a tracing of this and compare it. Guys, I'm sorry, guys, for being so out of frame. I can see it just fine. I'm going to do a tracing of this and compare it to a regular Jackson headstock. Um, I've started accumulating some parts, not necessarily for this. Again, I have uh, Kaler Steeler. I really don't have a whole lot of use for. It's a pretty decent trim. Um, again, I probably will put a big block on there. If this thing will take it. I have a, uh, a JB, a Duncan JB. I picked up dirt cheap off of Facebook Marketplace. Uh, Facebook Marketplace is like the Wild West, um, but I got a real Seymour Duncan JB and a real German-made Floyd Rose for $125, bucks, something like that. And it was a pain dealing with the, the girl from New Jersey. I think I've told this story. A little pothead. But, you know, that's going to... That's certainly going to look the part. Much better than... Are they going to line up? Mm, yep. Yep. That, that'll that look, you know, 10,000 times better than the junk that was on here. Yeah. Tuners will be fine. I'm going to have to pick up. I realize that I don't have an R3 clamp, a black R3 clamp in stock. Um, you saw me oil up the uh, fretboard. Took It took the lemon oil very well, and it darkened up nicely. Uh, you know, going into this with your eyes open, my friends, uh, this could be a good buy. You know, I mean... You want a Firebird with a Floyd Rose, something that you could gig with, something you could just knock around or hang on your wall. I picked this up for 200. You make an offer on the ones that are left. The ones that are left are more expensive. They're all, they also be in the 275, 260 range. They probably won't take 200 for them. Make an offer. Um, it's supposed to be solid mahogany guitar. I mean, I'm not gonna drill into it and find out, but anyway. So there's all the issues with the Chinesium Jackson Firebird, the Robin Crosby Firebird. Um, the next installment. Oh, I do. I ordered. I ordered up some brushed aluminum plates for the back. I, it's just the way I am. So, but we can get this thing. Hopefully, we can get this thing playing before then. Oh, see, this doesn't have that spring support plate. I think. Yeah, that's. I can already tell that the uh, the Kaler the Kaler spring assembly. These fingers are wider than the Floyd Rose, and they're a lot stiffer. So we've lost that that tone-sucking piece from in there, which will actually be good um, when it comes time to really have to deck this thing to get some low action. All right, so anyway, hope you've uh, enjoyed the uh, everything wrong with the Chinesium Jackson Firebird and watching this thing get stripped down to, to nothing, that's very satisfying, pulling all the parts off the guitar. Hit me up in the comments with what you, your thoughts, what you think. If you have any experience with one of these, um, give me the old thumbs up. Thumbs up. <laughs> really helps out the channel. Hit me up in the comments, like I said, and subscribe if you're new. Um, tons of great content 
on there, my friends. Share the video if you are so inclined. Does anybody share videos? Don't know. All right, my friends. Take care.